The term self-soothing gets a really bad rep, but it's really not that serious. In this video, we're gonna talk about what self-soothing is, why it's important, and some tips on how you can teach your child this skill. and in define the actual term self-soothing. Basically, all this means is that your child can stop crying without being comforted by a parent or a caregiver. So bottom line, it's when your child is upset about something and they are able to calm themselves down without help. If your child does not have this self-soothing skill, then you as the parent or caregiver are going to be responsible for helping your child calm down every single time they're upset. This may look like being up all night long, getting your baby back to sleep, or you may have a clingy baby all day long who doesn't know how to entertain themselves, they can't play independently, they really just need to be attached to you all the time because they don't know how to self-regulate. A lot of times when parents come to me and their child doesn't have these self-soothing skills, the parents are exhausted and frustrated. A lot of times the parents are butting heads with each other because maybe one parent believes that they need to soothe their baby and then the other parent thinks that the baby needs to gain some independence and do it on their own and they can't reach a middle ground. That's where I come in with my one-on-one -on -one consultations. If you're interested, click the link down below and set up a free call and we can get to know each other anyways. But we also need to talk about why self-soothing is important. So as the definition says, your baby will be able to calm themselves down without needing help. And that is so important both during the day and at night. So of course, if your baby can self-soothe, then they are able to put themselves to sleep at bedtime and through the middle of the night. When your baby's transitioning through their sleep cycles, they're going to be able to connect them and have more consolidated sleep because they can soothe themselves back to sleep when they're aroused a bit when they are transitioning to the next sleep cycle. If they're not able to do this and you're seeing nights that are broken up into little chunks of sleep, your child's not getting consolidated sleep and they're not going to wake up feeling well rested and they are going to be more clingy and less independent during the day. So when your child does have these self-soothing skills and they're having more consolidated sleep, they're happier during the day, they can play more independently, they're practicing their milestones and all the things that you want your baby to do really relies on having that skill of putting themselves to sleep and being able to self-soothe. So here are some tips that I have for you as the parent or caregiver. Tip number one is to pause. Let your child breathe. Let your child figure things out on their own. It doesn't mean that you need to let your child cry it out. You just need to pause. You don't have to run to your child every single second that they're upset. I understand that it's upsetting for a parent to hear your child cry, but if you pause for three to five minutes, Sometimes that's all it takes for your child to be able to work it out on their own. You can even use this pause strategy when your child is very young, when they're only six months old, maybe they're frustrated because they can't reach a toy and instead of just running to them and handing it to them, let them work it out. It's okay, your child's not gonna be traumatized by having a little bit of independence and a little bit of independence will go a long way. You will be able to get things done, your baby will learn how to play independently and that's a very, very, important skill especially when it comes to preschool going to kindergarten all the things that you think are really far away but you want to set them up for success in these environments tip number two is to have a plan and that's where I come in set up a consultation I will make your customized sleep plan and help your baby learn to self-soothe at bedtime in the middle of the night and taking solid naps so if you have a set plan and you know exactly what you're going to do every single day to help teach your child this self-soothing skill then you're going to feel a lot more sane and then tip number three is to be consistent with your plan if you change your plan every other day, you're gonna be frustrated because you're gonna think nothing's working, I've tried everything, and if you're nodding your head right now being like, yes, I tried everything, it's probably a problem of consistency. So you probably didn't try something long enough before changing and doing something else, and you have to remind yourself, 
You don't learn something perfectly the first time somebody introduces a new skill to you and neither do babies, especially babies and toddlers. They need so much repetition of the same thing and routines and all the things being the same, predictable and consistent before they can really learn that this is what they're supposed to do. But that brings me to tip number four is to expect ups and downs. So teaching any skill ever is not going to be a linear process. It's not going to be I'm deciding to teach my kids self-soothing skills and then they just do it. That's not real life. So what you really need to do is expect it to be ups and downs. It's going to ebb. It's going to flow. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. There's going to be days where your baby doesn't feel good or maybe they're teething or maybe anything. Maybe they didn't sleep well at night and now they're grumpy and clingy and just having a rough day and you decide this is what my baby needs right now. My baby just needs to be worn and held and maybe I'll just put the baby in the baby carrier all day and you know go about your day and then you try again the next day. There's definitely a balance between listening to your child and what they need and following a plan and being consistent. So my big rules of thumb with consistency is following the 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time you're following your plan and your routines and everything and then 20% of the time it's fine to stray from that but with that being said when your child is sick or if you're traveling or if they're teething and they need some extra comfort so that's your 20% and those are the times where you know and maybe you're not going to be following your routines and your plans straight to a T because your baby has other needs that kind of trump what your plan is on teaching your baby different skills and this goes for self-soothing, but it really goes for everything in parenting. So keep it in mind, 80-20 rule, consistent as often as you can. Expect ups and downs, but above all, just know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Your child is going to learn this skill and that it is something important that you need to prioritize. If you're interested in my free baby sleep guide, then click the link down below and you can download that today and it will be delivered straight to your inbox. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Click this playlist over here to watch more baby and toddler sleep training tips. Click this button to subscribe so you don't miss a video and keep blooming. Mwah.